Friends, welcome to our first virtual general body meeting. We welcome His Excellency Bishop Paul Hinder and thank him for his time for being with us. Thank you, His Excellency. Welcome. Now to welcome His Excellency, we have a small video by our choir. First of all, good evening and happy Pentecost. May the Holy Spirit do his work, not only this evening and tomorrow, but all the time now that we are challenged in this world, in the church, in the whole region. You may have read that for tomorrow, in a particular way, the Pope is asking our prayers for the peace in uh, Palestine and Israel. I just saw all the prayer groups there. They may join the vigil tomorrow evening of Pentecost, asking the Holy Spirit to intervene all where, wherever peace and justice are uh, at stake and not respected among human beings. So I am happy to meet you this evening and I am ready also to answer to questions when I can give an answer. Sometimes things need more reflection. So don't expect that I have simply the solution of every problem that we may face this evening. But thank you for giving me this opportunity and that thanks to the modern technology, we have this possibility to have this uh, meeting uh, online as we cannot easily now gather 
in my physical presence. So I am open. As Excellency said, he's open for all your questions. He's going to answer your questions as much as he can. And some that require thoughts, he will let us know later. So friends, we're going to open the floor for all of you. You can ask us the questions. Those friends on the Zoom, you can question us by just raising your hands and we'll, let you, we'll unmute you and let you ask the questions. Those friends who are watching us on YouTube, you can message us on a WhatsApp number 056-306-2052. But please, those who are on Zoom, keep your mic always on mute and raise your hands to what? So we have a few questions that have come already. So we won't take one of them. So the first question will be, thank you to St. Joseph's Parish and Family Ministry for conducting marriage preparation course online. Would have definitely preferred to attend this person. What is Bishop Paul's message to couples who attend the marriage preparation course and do not sacramentalize their marriage, but prefer civil marriage? Yeah, the question has already been brought up in another meeting today. Of course, uh, it is clear that for us as church, for me as a bishop, uh, for Catholics who enter marriage, they have to do it in the proper form as a sacramental marriage. For us, the civil marriage has not uh, the validity, the sacramental validity. So the only way is to convince the people, but that may need sometimes further instruction also, but I'm expecting that this topic is during the marriage preparation course also brought up, that uh, the sacramentality of the uh, marriage is uh, good, that it's not always understood. People think, oh, we're well, not only in the society, we are recognized, that's fine. But uh, I think the deeper understanding, what does it mean to be a Christian couple living the sacrament of the marriage? I think very often that is missing. I remember that once in the past, when we spoke about this issue uh, in another plane among the bishops, that was one bishop who said, I am convinced most of the marriages are not valid because of lack of true understanding and acceptance of the marriage in the deepest sense of the word. That may be exaggerated, but there is a real problem that many people, they enter a civil marriage and think, oh, now it's done, we don't need more. But uh, it's a lack of understanding what a true Christian marriage means. <clears throat> and I ask simply, those who have to deal with these cases, patiently to introduce the people and to convince them to go a step further. Sometimes there are re reasons which are not valid to avoid the sacramental marriage because sometimes they think we need to make a big feast uh, to, to spend the money and to indebt us for the rest of the life. That's not the sense. You can have a simple marriage which is sacramentally valid. You don't make a big social feast here in the country or back in your home country. We should pass a little bit these this constraints imposed sometimes by cultural traditions. Thank you, Bishop. The next one is a suggestion and a thanks. They're saying, I suggest, please appreciate all frontline heroes from our church and recognize them with a shield or memento for the effort for the society. Thank you to our parish priest for all the work in the last 12 months or more, marriages, baptisms, etc., are gradually all back to a new state of new normal. Whatever new normal means, we do not know yet, what yet, because it depends not only on us, but the regulations, they are sometimes imposed, and there's always the risk that they last longer than uh, needed. But that's another issue we have to discuss with other people. Now, regarding this shield and so on, why not? No, it's not always easy to know for, for how to give it, because 
in uh, naming people or categories of people you are excluding others, but that we remember them in, uh, in a specific way. This can be do, do, during the mass, it can be in other activities. Uh, there is no doubt that we all who have until now survived are happy and grateful to, for, to all those who have exposed themselves to the care of others during this difficult time of a pandemic, all the nurses, all the physicians, and many others who have worked in, uh, in, in, in the malls and so on, all the people who are exposed. And I think probably most of our faithful in one moment or in the other were exposed. So of course we cannot give to all of them the shield. We would have to categorialize and to know how to do it. But be assured of those who are concerned that your services, your commitment is appreciated. I am absolutely sure about that. And if someone cannot appreciate it, then uh, I would say better he goes back to his home country then he may enjoy a little bit less service and he, he will deserve what he deserves. Thank you, Bishop. Now, Bishop, for you, we have a small video. I'm sure you've already seen them, but again, from the cute children of our catechism. <laughs> And I am Julia Maya. We are very happy and excited to welcome His Most Reverend Bishop Paul. May our dear Lord protect and bless you always. We can't wait to see you. As a child of Catholic faith, I seek hope and understanding that you may enlighten us to our purpose and be inspired to help many others believe that during these uncertain times, the only certain is God will never abandon us. Again, extending my warm welcome to His Excellency Bishop Paul Hinder, please accept my simple sketch portrait of you with love. Dear Bishop Paul, we are super excited about your pastoral visit. We love you, Bishop Paul, and we want you to know that you are an expression of God's love. Thank you for being our shepherd, preacher, guide, teacher, and friend. I am blessed to be a part of our church catechism. Online class is a challenge for me but still I become closer to God. As every week's class is fun and full of learning. I am certain that all the teens in the youth ministry would be elated to pray with you and receive your blessings. Even during this difficult situation, us teens have been staying strong in our faith and we are continuing to learn about Jesus' word each day through the online sessions conducted by the church. Hopefully, we can all partake in and celebrate the Holy Eucharist with you very soon. Dear Bishop, we welcome you to our St. Joseph Parish. We miss seeing you around because now we have online catechism classes. Thank you for being a loving shepherd to us. Hope we pass these challenging times and see you soon in Friday Catechism classes. We love you and pray that God bless you always. This pastoral visit is a little bit different from the previous years. We are meeting virtually, but hey, it's the same faces. The bond and the love we share remains unchanged and it will always remain the same. On account of that same love and sharing, we have with us our very own Bishop Paul Hinder and it's my pleasure and a blessing for us all to welcome you, Bishop, to our Life Team family.
Thank you. <coughs> Thanks to the children and the capitalism team for this wonderful video. We move on to our next question. Daily masses get locked at 10, 9, 10 a.m. Can the church gates not be left open to allow people to enter during the duration of the mass, especially if the church is not full? Closing the gate should indicate the church is full. One more question. Provide cutoff time five minutes prior to start a holy mass for allowing those who are in queue waiting entry without booking. Yeah, you are touching a question, of course, which is not only resolvable by us. First of all, there are revelations given, and as long as we cannot keep open the compound at our own uh, will and according to our own regulations, there will be a compromise necessary. Now, is it negotiable that we can be a little bit more flexible with the opening of the gate, that's another question I cannot give here a valid answer because it depends not only on the authority of the bishop, but uh, we have to negotiate with the DCD and we have to have a consensus also in the parish. Definitely, I am expecting, hopefully, that uh, the whole rule that the compound has to be closed during the day, that that will be changed in the future, not too far away, once the, the pandemic is more or less under control. Until then, probably we will not be able to change essentially the present rules. But uh, again, I can give you a valid answer to say. I had already made a formal request that uh, the, uh, the church compound should be accessible for individuals who want to come to pray during the day without making, keeping, of course, the security measures, but that has other complications as long as we need to make the, the temperature test and all these things that needs the presence of ashes. And uh, we can, of course, not afford to have additional employees paid for, I don't know, uh, around uh, from the morning to the evening, and volunteers may simply not be available for the necessary time during the day. That's another question which has to be resolved. But of course, I think all of us, we are expecting that one day we will have again free access to the church, free access to the masses uh, without too many restrictions regarding social distance, but for the time being, we have to be realistic. The pandemic is not over, and it is not more than prudent that we keep the security measures as a protection, not only for ourselves, but for the protection of our next. Thank you, Bishop. The next question is from the answer may be similar to what we just answered, but still we will uh, put the question. Suggestion to start online confession using Zoom platforms or introduce confession booking platform and perform the sacrament for the believers to come there and sit in a large room or spacious hall, keeping a large distance with the priest. I think it would be a good idea if confession restarts at least for who has a valid RT-PCR negative report within 48 or 72 hours. In the same way, we do the registration for mass, we can have confession booking. Yeah, the, the whole question of the confession is something that bothers us on me. Uh, of course, you can forget the online uh, confession because it's not allowed by the church. You have to be physically present in the same room, I would say, or in the same area. Now, uh, the other question is, can we, when can we open that uh, hours are given and how do we organize it to avoid uh, the breaking of the regulations of the government? I think uh, there are already now people who make individual arrangements with a, with a particular priest from time to time. But of course, it should be accessible for more than only a few elect and we are expecting that there will be in the future not too far away 
a possibility that you can make arrangements. It uh, must not be ne necessarily by online, that may be also complicated for the priests, uh, but to give times where you know uh, priest, uh, or priests are available for individual confessions in the area where the, the, secu the, the, the cautions uh, regarding the security are uh, ob uh, st strictly uh, observed. I think that will be possible, but it will take time because you can, you, you know, it is easier to enter fast into uh, lockdown. It takes usually more time to get out validly uh, out from the lockdown with all the aspects we have to, we have to observe. <clears throat> Next one. In today's world, most of the services are open for reviews to get better, smarter, stronger. How about a provision for the community to give reviews to the priest on their homily? Yeah, you, you have to react, if possible, not in the church, because it's a little bit disturbing if someone uh, shouts from the, uh, from the <laughs> church and says, I don't like your homily. Uh, or speak louder, or I don't understand you, and so on. Of course, that's a real problem, which uh, I think we, I realize it, and we all suffer a little bit under that. <clears throat> but to give, in a gentle way, a feedback is okay. Do it. I uh, try also to do it. I uh, uh, encourage all our priests from time to time to make a self-control to look at the video of their own homily and then make an assessment. And sometimes it would be good to ask, uh, not, uh, not an enemy, uh, we can do it with a friend who can have an open word to correct us. For the rest, we have to live that not everybody is uh, a world known preacher. And by the way, not all the world known preachers are very good, really good. They are sometimes recognized good, but they may not necessarily be in the quality uh, good. They are simple preachers who have something to say. But uh, I uh, invite you in a gentle way to give us feedback when you see something is uh, you, you don't understand or it's too complicated. Uh, sometimes you may feel the bishop is too theological, or I don't know, uh, or a priest uh, has not the, the, the skill of preaching in an understandable way. Some things can be learned. Others are, I would say, natural limits of a human person, which we have to take into account. Maybe we now start waiting for the priest homily later. That is right. right? <laughs> so now we got a video specially prepared by all the servers for his excellence. Greetings, Your Excellency. We thank God for your presence and may it guide you for the rest of your life. May God bless you always. Welcome, Your Excellency, Bishop Paul Hinder. We wish you good health and God bless. We welcome His Excellency Bishop Paul Hinder. We love you and we will pray for you. We prepare ourselves for the pastoral visit to fill us with the Holy Spirit and happiness. We welcome His Excellency Bishop. We pray. Greetings, Your Excellency. We thank God for your presence and may He guide you for the rest of your life. May God bless you always. Welcome, Your Excellency, Bishop Paul Hinder. We wish you good health and God bless. We welcome His Excellency, Bishop Paul Hinder. We love you and we will pray for you. We prepare ourselves for the pastoral visit to fill us with the Holy Spirit and happiness. We welcome His Excellency, Bishop. We pray that may the Lord give you victory in every step that you take and receive blessings in abundance. Welcome His Excellency Bishop Paul. 
We are always praying for your safety and good health. God bless you always. We love you. Your Excellency Bishop Paul Hinda, we are highly excited to welcome you to the church to pray with us and bless us. Welcome Bishop. We miss serving us with you and we wish you peace and prosperity. God bless. Your Excellency Bishop Paul, may the Lord continue to shower you with blessings. We wish you good <coughs> health and success in your mission. Thank you Bishop Paul for the work you have done for this congregation has truly been a blessing. We are blessed to have you as a shepherd who loves his flock so much. We welcome you, Your Excellency. May God continue to give you the power, courage, knowledge, and wisdom to continue to propagate His words to mankind. God bless you always. Welcome, His Excellency Bishop. We are eagerly waiting for your pastoral visit. We always pray for your good health and happiness. Welcome, His Excellency Bishop. We pray for your long-lasting health and strength. We hope that you can inspire others with your faith in God. May God bless you. Dear Bishop Paul Hindo, thank you for leading our church in the Middle East and making it possible for us to worship and live our Christian faith in a Muslim country. You are always in our prayers. Welcome His Excellency Bishop Paul Hindo. We appreciate your faithfulness in the work you do to lead our church. We are so blessed to have our Bishop Paul Hinder in our midst today. We pray to the Lord to continue to guide you in his path of love, peace and mercy. Thank you for being our beloved shepherd. Welcome His Excellency Bishop. We very much appreciate you and we hope you enjoy your long-lasting life and may God bless you. Hearty welcome Bishop Paul. Thank you for being a great shepherd during these difficult times, especially when we need hope. Greetings, Your Excellency Bishop. We hope that God may always provide you with the gift of the holiness of life, good health, and enough courage to lead us Catholics into the Kingdom of God. Dear Bishop, stay safe and healthy. Love and prayers for you. God bless you. The pastoral visit overjoys me. As sheep waiting for the shepherd, we eagerly wait for the bishop's arrival. Welcome His Excellency Bishop Paul. We all love you and thank you for teaching us more about our Christian life. Uh, we keep you in our prayers every day. May God bless you and have a great day. I take this opportunity to offer a warm welcome to His Excellency Bishop Paul, our Shepherd. Your pastoral visit this day will ever remain fresh in our grateful hearts. This is another day that the Lord has given us. We are here to bark under the butterfly. It is a time that we all look forward to welcome His Excellency Bishop Paul. We love you. We pray for you. Welcome Bishop Paul Hinder. I'm praying for your good health and for your safety. Wishing you all the best. Stay safe and God bless. Welcome His Excellency Bishop Paul. Thank you for coming and leading our church and giving us your blessings. We love you and you will be in our prayers always. Welcome His Excellency Bishop Paul to this auspicious occasion. We pray that the Almighty God may shower His blessings on you and keep you safe. May the Holy Spirit continue to guide you in your journey. Thank you Bishop Paul. Dear Excellency Bishop Paul, you have always been our inspiration and mentor. Your presence has made us feel holy. Um, welcome and hello, Your Excellency Bishop Paul. We love you and to, and we will con we'll still continue to pray for you. Thank you. Wishing His Excellency Bishop Paul Hinder a very warm welcome to our parish. Sending my love and prayers to you and may God bless you. Okay, thank you. Thank you all the service. I miss you at the right place. Huh? I am waiting the moment when you are really serving at the altar again. Thank you. We hope to see them soon back. Mm -hmm. The next one is a suggestion. Periodical request to parishioners to sign up as volunteers with their areas of interest and experience with their good database to analyze and utilize 
more the strength of parishioners for the glory of God and welfare of mankind. Every individual is blessed with unique strength and experience, which if tapped can be used for the glory of God and the welfare of mankind. It could be administration, finance, singing, dramatics, social work, sports, digital expertise, social media expertise. Okay, thank you for this passage to the parish council. Noted. <laughs> we will definitely take note of this. <laughs> the next question. Periodical visit of priests and nuns to parishioners' house to bless and pray with them will be a good opportunity to interact one-to-one -one and identify their strengths and struggles and assist parishioners whenever possible. Yeah, that's a good wish. But uh, we have also to take into account the present situation where it is not always uh, indicated to make visits in uh, private houses as long as the, uh, <coughs> the pandemic is not under control. And then sometimes there is also a little bit of conflict. Uh, if the priest is not in the office, people say, well, where are the priests? When we come to the bishop, to the parish house or to the bishop's house, and when we are not going for visits, then the complaints are there. Then we see never a priest during the day. People are not at home, so they might have to do the visit in the evening. In the evening, they are always uh, they could bring you examples. People observing where are the priests going. When they are coming back to a late hour, then there's a suspicion that something is not properly done. So uh, it is also a question of the atmosphere in a whole parish that you don't expose the priest to unnecessary suspicions. But definitely when there is the need to visit the sick, for example, or in a family wishes to have the blessing I think our priests will do what they can. Of course, at the present time, we limit because of the pandemic. But you have also to understand, in a parish with 100,000 people, uh, it may not always be easy that we can uh, 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 respond to every wish that may be legitimate, but simply not uh, realistic. But I understand the request which is there. We pass it to those who can do it. Don't expect that the bishop personally comes to the private houses. I have uh, made that rule right from the beginning, uh, also not to, to uh, bring up uh, suspicion that the bishop is partial. Because anyhow, he cannot go to everybody. <laughs> the next question is on the volunteers. Uh, can the ushers smile more and be a bit more welcoming? They do an awesome job of keeping us organized, but it can be done with a smile. There's one more question along with that we'll add it. Volunteers to be careful when spraying the hand sanitizer before distribution of the Eucharist, which sometimes fall accidentally on one's clothes, on the pew, or on the floor. They are unaware of this as they are in a hurry to cover the whole congregation. Okay, pass this uh, message to the ushers, respectively to those who have to work. Uh, with the smile, it's fine. But everybody who is expecting the usher smiling have to, has to ask him or herself, are they sm smiling to the ushers? Sometimes that would also help. If you smile to the ushers, I doubt that they will look at you with a grim face. <laughs> Do as the bishop does. The bishop is always smiling at the volunteers no, no, in the past. Not always, but uh, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> okay. uh, now we have one more video from the choir. <coughs> Thank you. 
array of four, four centuries, I think it should be two. Because I don't think he needs prayers for himself. Uh, he is already a saint. Uh. <laughs> okay. Thank you, the choir. Uh, please note the comments from Bishop. He's changed the wordings. <laughs> now, the next question is a concern as a parent. I just want to ask our Bishop about the St. Joseph School. Why it is limited only to Indian nationalities, where it should be open to all nationalities? Our children really wanted to enroll. Please, Bishop Paul, to open them to other nationalities to have a privilege to a Catholic school here in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, I understand the question. There was a plan years ago to have a second school which would have had the British syllabus because that means we have to change the syllabus of the school. And that's a major operation which we cannot simply do uh, like that because uh, we have the daily syllabus at the St. Joseph School, and that may not be for uh, Europeans or for Africans or for Filipinos. So the idea was originally to open a second school, but at that time, first of all, we didn't get the land. And in the meantime, there is a problem also with the finances. But maybe that my successor, we'll have the chance to open another school if it is worth it. Because people generally, they do not understand the difficulties we have nowadays to run a school. And uh, all the regulations which are given us from the ministry, you can ask every principal around the UAE who will uh, speak about the headaches they have with all this. Uh, we have St. Mary's School in Dubai, that's the charter that started right from the beginning in a different way. The new school in Rasa Khema is the same, but now to change the, the syllabus of the, the St. Joseph School, that would be a major operation and not so easy to be. So patience for the moment. Thank you, Bishop. The next question, dear Bishop, we have noticed that few parishioners who have their vehicles parked in the church basement do not follow the protocols of swiping the Emirates ID and are not registered for the mass and still they attend the mass and at times argue with the volunteers and do not follow the protocol. Could you suggest a solution for the same? No, I can't. Uh, I can't suggest a solution that has to be worked out by the parish because uh, if people do not follow the, the, the rules which are already given, then that's not right now my business. <laughs> of course, there are always questions about that. I do not even know exactly now who has the real access to the basement. I only know that there's a, a certain list, but I haven't seen that. I think that's administered by the parish right. as far as. Good. Okay. Uh, the next one. Your Excellency, thank you for taking the time from a busy schedule to make time to speak to our parishioners. My humble request is why is the parish priest not allowing my dear mom to visit our St. Joseph Parish, where everywhere they have removed age restrictions. She received the necessary approval when she registered online, but one of the parish council members personally came up to me and told me that I should not bring her to church for her own safety. My mom is fit and fine, and all she needs now is just to visit the church, which she misses the most. Humble request for you to grant her permission. Yeah. First of all, I do not know who the person is, uh, so I cannot give a, a permission to a, a, a anonymously. Yes. We would have to examine the case to know what's behind. I'm ready to, to look into the matter or to ask someone of my uh, collaborators to look into the matter to see what is the reason behind. Thank you, Bishop. Now the next, we have a video. This video is specially made by the people in the question for a long time now. So special video made by the volunteers of our parish 
Please note during this video, they have taken precautions, all the safe distance has been kept, and they are wearing masks all the time. Jerusalem, I call on me. Jerusalem, I call on me. Complain why people don't smile at us. They don't complain why people are rude to us and why no one greets us. So really, thank you to all the volunteers and everyone who's present in the church nowadays, the choir, the lectors. Thank you for your services. Now we move on to the next question.
Okay, we have issues with the screen, but we'll continue with the question. Your Excellency, can we please request more young priests like Father Derek and Father Abishai to serve our parish as the sermons are very thoughtful, provoking and interesting. Such priests will really attract the youth of our parish and bring more people to our church and more parishioners will grow in their faith. I noticed thanks to this pandemic, our youth are no more engaged in our faith and bringing such energetic priests will hopefully draw more youth to our Catholic faith. Thank you. No, I understand the wish, but you have to get them. You cannot make them. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. Next question, request for catechism to be online with a catechist instead of the video lessons. That's the request. Uh, the request is to start the catechism online with the catechist instead of just the videos being played. Yeah, I would say you, we need both. Of course, uh, we need the teaching of the catechists or the, yeah, the, the, the teaching of the catechists in person or on, uh, on the line. And then the videos are always a help. Helpful. A help, of course. There's no problem with that. Okay. The next question, good evening, His Excellency Bishop. I take this opportunity to thank you for providing us masses from July 2020 onwards. Many children received First Holy Communion and Confirmation during pandemic 2020 and 2021. It's a very successful event. For this, I thank God and you, dear Bishop, parish priest and all priests, sisters, parish council members, volunteers, and all parishioners. My request is like pastoral visit, if you provide an opportunity for all parishioners to share their ideas, suggestions, opinions, etc., by scheduled Zoom meeting with parish priests and other priests, by community, ministries, and prayer group wise for the improvement of a parish with a Catholic faith every month or three months. Thank you. Okay, let's discuss it in the pastoral council. <laughs> we'll definitely discuss about it. Yeah. Uh, one more question. As the restrooms are now open in the parks and in the malls, since the number of parishioners allowed to go inside the church compound is very few, can we allow those people who need to use the toilet to avail the facility? Some are coming from far places and it makes very uncomfortable. Thank you for your understanding. Again, a, a question that has been resolved by the parish itself in a, a mutual understanding with the DCD, who has clearly given instructions regarding the opening of the toilets. That is something I cannot simply change. Now we have a video, one more video from a choir that would like to present to you.
Thank you to the choir. We'll take the next question. Is it any chance to pray to the Mother Mary by the parishioners at the grotto with registration when we attended Mass, at least either before or after Mass? Again, they would like to pray at the grotto. Yeah, yeah, yes. I fully understand that. But I cannot give here now a, a valid answer because we would have to check because the timing, how long we can be on the compound and so on, and what uh, the regulations have to be taken into account. Of course, I'm also expecting the, personally that the possibility be given. Even myself, I have no access to the grotto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we volunteers are very strict. We do not allow it anyone is, to go there. It is bad. It is bad. <laughs> <laughs> of Thank course, you. I could move the bar, but uh, don't do that. <laughs> we'll move it for you, Bishop, when you come next. <laughs> okay, uh, as there's no much time now, we would be not taking any more questions. But before we go, we would request His Excellency to give his message to us and also give us a blessing. Yeah, the message is that it's too early now. <laughs> no. First of all, I simply wish to thank all those who have appeared this evening and what is behind the commitment of all these people in the different activities and ministries. I appreciate that. Also to make it clear, I understand the different questions. I think there are concerns not only of the relative uh, individual persons and uh, these are concerns shared also by many others. But we have also to accept that not always a um, solution is now possible in a short time because uh, we, we may agree or not agree, but the regulations are there and we cannot easily uh, put them out of force without the risk that one day the compound is again locked because you have to be clear about in many of the writings of the DCD, it was uh, at the end, the phrase, if you don't observe the regulations we are giving, the worship place will be closed. And of course, with this uh, behind, you may also understand that the parish priest or whoever is responsible has to be carefully, must carefully look what is possible and what's not. That doesn't exclude that we cannot negotiate with the DCD, what, we, by the way, we are doing every now and then to get uh, certain additional flexibility. But uh, it's not always easy to explain to the people that uh, matters are sometimes more complicated than it looks when we uh, see only from our personal point of view. So I ask you also the understanding what we don't need during this difficult time is uh, this uh, pity quarreling about uh, details which are not always essential. I, I understand the desire, me too. I would like to go from time to time to the grotto. And of course, uh, I can look at it from, from far uh, because I'm living on the compound, that's the difference to the people who are coming there. But uh, it, it is something which is really not essential, but desiderable. And we will surely open as soon as possible, and uh, the regulations allow it, uh, uh, that the access is again given. What I wish again to all of you, that you keep the spirit of joy and hope uh, when we are celebrating now Pentecost, don't forget it. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of joy, of hope, of uh, courage also, of commitment, of humility, and so on. Let us learn that again, and then we can also easily uh, live, live in peace. And don't forget what was asked from the ushers to do it yourself. Give a smile to those who meet you and life will change, I am sure. 
and I wish simply to smile at you this evening as uh, not only as a human smile, but also a smiling coming from God because the Holy Spirit is the smiling. Maybe some of you remember that, that I once in the early years in one of my homilies, I referred to the, uh, the cathedral in Germany where you have the Gothic statues of Our Lady and the angel Gabriel, and where both are smiling. Mary, who is receiving the message from the angel, and the angel Gabriel is smile, smiling to Our Lady. And that should be our behavior, that with this smiling, we are transmitting the good word. Lastly, the word incarnate, Jesus Christ. And that is our task as Christians, do it, start again, what I said this evening in the homily, start today, but not only tomorrow. And I give you now the blessing that we come to the end. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Excellency, thank you once again for your presence here. Welcome. We wish you all the luck and God bless. And dear friends, thank you so much for gathering and watching us live on YouTube and being with us on Zoom. Please remember the questions that were not answered or the questions that were not taken here will be given to His Excellency and they will be answered later. Thank you so much once again and have a good night. Thank you. Good night.